Canada, the Great White North. This massive nation encompasses a vast portion of the North American continent, containing an incredible variety of landscapes. The country is divided into ten provinces and three territories, each one home to its own slice of Canada's extensive and rugged terrain. So, this leads us to the question, what is the highest point of natural elevation in each province or territory, and where can it be found? Let's take a quick trip to all 13 Canadian provincial and territorial high points, in order from lowest to highest elevation. We start our journey on the Atlantic coast, more specifically on the island province of Prince Edward Island. This province of about 160,000 people is a quite low-lying place, but there are some rolling hills across the island. These hills reach their highest elevation in the middle of the island, at an unnamed point in the woods. The elevation here is about 140 meters above sea level, and there's not much at the site to indicate its high point status, just a small mailbox for visiting high pointers. In any case, it's a pretty easy one to visit given its low elevation and proximity to paved roads, and makes for a pleasant hike through the countryside. Hopping across the Northumberland Strait takes us to the next province in line, Nova Scotia. Although it's another somewhat low-lying province like nearby PEI, Nova Scotia is technically part of the Appalachian Mountains, and has many hills and ridges. The highest of these is White Hill, found in northern Cape Breton Island. It reaches 532 meters above sea level, and is part of the aptly named Cape Breton Highlands National Park. This high point is pretty isolated, being several kilometers away from the nearest maintained trails. Despite this, it is a beautiful area, and you probably won't run into many people if you visit. Taking us onto the mainland for the first time is Ontario. This large province, both in terms of area and population, is home to some rugged hills and mountains. The highest point in the province is found north of Sudbury, and is called Ishpatina Ridge. Ishpatina is an Ojibwe word, which perhaps unsurprisingly means high hill. The elevation here is about 692 meters above sea level. Once again, this is another quite tricky high point to reach, given its hefty distance from major roads. At the highest point of the ridge is an old fire tower, but visitors are not allowed to climb it. However, the view from the ground is still breathtaking. New Brunswick is up next, bringing us back to the Appalachian Mountains. In the northern half of the province, we find Mount Carleton Provincial Park, home to, you guessed it, Mount Carleton, which is the highest point in New Brunswick at 817 meters above sea level. This peak is not nearly as isolated as Ishpatina, with major roads passing nearby and a well-marked trail to the summit. In fact, this is the only provincial or territorial high point that features a standard park your car and hike to the top type of deal. As such, it's a popular destination and also features spectacular unobstructed views as the summit is above the tree line. We're venturing out into the Canadian Prairie Provinces now, and our first stop is Manitoba. Near and along the border with Saskatchewan is the Manitoba Escarpment, an area of glacially formed hills stretching for hundreds of miles. The highest of these hills is Bali Mountain, reaching 832 meters above sea level. This is hands down the easiest high point of all 13 to visit, as there is a road that goes directly to the summit and its lookout tower. The CBC has a broadcasting tower here too. All in all, Bali Mountain is a nice and simple stop for road trippers and high pointers alike. Let's move west one province to Saskatchewan, another prairie province home to some lovely hills. In the Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park, which straddles the border with Alberta, we find Saskatchewan's highest point. Much like PEI's high point, it doesn't have an official name. However, it reaches a much higher elevation of 1,392 meters, although it's not much of a summit. Located on a pasture about the same number of meters away from the Alberta border, there was a green triangular sign indicating its high point status. Otherwise, not too much to see here other than the local cows. Before we venture any more west, we've got one last stop on the Atlantic side of Canada to make. Along the coast of the Labrador Sea are the Torngat Mountains, which make up the northernmost border between Quebec and Newfoundland and Labrador. The highest mountain here is shared by both provinces, and has two different names, Mount Kobvik in Newfoundland and Labrador, and Mont de Beville in Quebec. It reaches an elevation of 1,652 meters above sea level, making it the highest Canadian peak east of the Rocky Mountains. This peak is extremely remote and is located in a permit-only national park, making the visit quite expensive and time-consuming. It's an absolutely stunning area, though. 
The first Canadian territory on the list is Nunavut, a vast yet sparsely populated territory. Its highest point brings us extremely far north, about 81.5 degrees north actually. Barbeau Peak, at an elevation of 2,616 meters above sea level, is the highest point of the Canadian Arctic Islands, being found on Ellesmere Island. Given how ridiculously remote this mountain is, traveling to the area is very expensive. As such, ascending it is no common task and has only been accomplished by a handful of people. The dramatic weather conditions also pose a significant challenge to any potential climbers. Heading southwest from here, we arrive in the Northwest Territories. Here we find the Mackenzie Mountains, located along the border with Yukon Territory. They're home to some incredible peaks, and the highest one on the Northwest Territory side is Mount Nirvana, reaching 2,773 meters in elevation. Technically, there is no official name for this peak, but it's unofficially been called Mount Nirvana for nearly 60 years. Once again, this is a peak that's only been summited by a handful of people, owing to its remote location and dangerous climate. Going even farther south, down to the Canadian Rockies, we find the province of Alberta, which shares the mountain range with British Columbia. Along said border is Alberta's highest point, Mount Columbia. Though the name is counterintuitive, the summit of the mountain is in Alberta and reaches an elevation of 3,747 meters above sea level. Mount Columbia is the second highest peak in the Canadian Rockies behind only Mount Robson in British Columbia. Though certainly a challenging peak to ascend, it's not extremely demanding or that difficult to reach, relative to some of the previous shorter peaks on this list. Next up is Alberta's western neighbor, British Columbia. Despite this province's Mount Robson being the highest mountain in the Canadian Rockies, this is not the highest mountain in the whole province. That honor goes to Mount Fairweather, found along the border with Alaska in the St. Elias Mountains. Rising up dramatically from the coast, Mount Fairweather quickly climbs to an elevation of 4,671 meters, making it one of the highest coastal mountains in the world. The name is also one of the biggest misnomers out there, since this mountain gets absolutely pummeled by sub-zero temperatures and dozens of inches of snowfall throughout the year. Captain James Cook sure got lucky with the weather when he spotted this peak back in 1778. And of course, this leaves us with just one territory left to visit. A bit farther north in Yukon Territory is Mount Logan, also part of the St. Elias Mountains. This mountain reaches a staggering elevation of 5,959 meters above sea level, making it the tallest mountain in both Yukon Territory and all of Canada, of course, as well as the second tallest mountain of the entire North American continent. It's extremely wide at its base as well, having the largest base circumference of any non-volcanic mountain. Mount Logan was named after the founder of the Geological Survey of Canada, Sir William Logan. It's truly an awe-inspiring peak and offers a formidable challenge to high pointers around the world. With that, we've concluded our short high pointers journey around all 13 of Canada's provinces and territories. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other geography videos and subscribe. There is plenty more like this one to come. I'll see everyone next time.